Hello and welcome to Sun Spotlight. I am your host, Charisma. Grateful to be back for another episode. In addition to these interviews that I do every Thursday at noon, I also write a weekly column for the Philadelphia Sunday Sun, which you can read on newsstands every Friday. You can also check us out online at www.philosun.com and be sure to follow the Philadelphia Sunday Sun on all social media platforms. Today, I'm thrilled to be speaking with a very talented actor. Marcus Scribner plays Daniel and is the executive producer of the upcoming film, How I Learned to Fly. So it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to Sun Spotlight, Marcus Scribner. So first and foremost, congratulations on a, a really powerful story. Um, how did you first come on board with uh, how to how to learn how to how I learned how to fly, and um, not only as an actor but as an executive producer? Um, well, first I was given the script by my team over at at CAA, um, and they just they send me scripts all the time to take a look at to to possibly join and be a part of, um, and I just kind of clicked and resonated with this story. Um, Wow, I never even know. Well, the director of our film, his last name is also Story. So I clicked and resonated with Simon's story as well um, and was able to to uh, meet up with him and, and discuss how I learned to fly and discuss my character. Um, and it, it was just a, a, a hit right away. I think I resonated with the, the underdog story Mm -hmm. um and i i resonated with the, the rags to riches story I, I just thought it was it was very beautifully done very beautifully written and um simon comes from a background of doing you know mostly music videos so i knew he would he would keep our visuals on lock and he had um great ideas for for soundtrack and um and and some cool editing tricks up his sleeve so I was just really excited overall to be a part of the project and um and 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 connected to the script and yeah oh and he had also thrown together a short um a short prior to um prior to us making the film uh and I got to take a look at that and it was it was beautiful and it was only 2 minutes long I think and um I feel like it expressed the story uh perfectly and so I was like why not make a a feature length and and get more people involved in this. That makes perfect sense. Um, and people, I think, are used to more seeing you in, in lighter roles, or you know, you really funny, particularly on Blackish. Um, what was it like for you, kind of delving into a more serious role and and going into the the drama genre? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun to flex that creative muscle. Um, you know, when you've been on a a sitcom for so many years, you know your character like the back of your hand. Um, and to be able to to dive in and, and explore a new character who's vastly different than anything I've done before and has lived through life experiences I've uh, had the fortune of not having to experience it was a it was an interesting challenge um, and it took a, a lot of focus and and creativity and um, and spending time you know after set working through things and really getting into the mind of this character to to pull off, which was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun creatively. Okay. And can we talk a little bit about Daniel? Like, how would you, how would you express who he is as a person for someone who hasn't had the pleasure of, of seeing the film yet? How would you describe Daniel? Um, Daniel, I would say is a, is a fighter. Um, he's, he's been through the ringer. Um, I don't want to give away too many spoilers about the film. Um, but you know, he's had a, he's definitely had a rough go of it. His, his parents are no longer there. He's having to support his brother. He's homeless. He's still trying to pursue a higher education, um, and make things right for his family. Um, all while facing insurmountable odds. Uh, and so I just, I, I think he's a fighter and I kind of look to him for, for inspiration when, when doing this and, and strength. And I was like, what does it look like to, to, you know, have nothing, but at the same time, um, feel like you have everything right in front of you and this, this single family member that you have left. I, I couldn't even imagine that pain and that hurt. Um, and trying to, to bring that to life was, was definitely a challenge, but, 
Um, I think we laid it all out on the line for how I learned to fly. And um, I'm very excited for people to to get to see it. Um, so I know you said that it was a lot of fun kind of exploring what it would be like to play a character that has, you know, all this depth and this really um, heartbreaking backstory. But there's also been this conversation, I feel like more recently, just talking about uh, the importance of maintaining mental health and some of well, a large portion of this story is really heavy, just, you know, looking at what um, Daniel and Eli have to endure just to survive, just to try to get to a space mm -hmm. where they're safe, where they, you know, have a shelter and, you mm -hmm. know, have things that we need, you know, as human beings to survive. So were there any things that you did for yourself just to make sure that you were maintaining your mental health and, and that you could stay in, in a healthy place while you had to delve into some of that pain and hurt that that your character requires? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously it's important to, you know, mentally decompress after set, uh, especially during some of the heavier filming days. Mm -hmm. um, there's one scene that I have with Meth that is, um yeah that was rough <laughs> it was yeah rough it was you. really rough rough to it was rough to be a part of and and kind of the memories and, and feelings and things that you have to dig up to uh conjure that kind of emotion is I don't know it's kind of things that you never face on a daily basis and it just it, it, it wears at you emotionally so after a day like that I had to just completely wipe my brain clean and be like all right, so that was not real. That was not real. You do not. And it's weird because I started, because at first I was kind of feeding off of my own life experiences, mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, it worked to a certain extent, but then when I was in the moment and and um, it, Cliff just did such a great job of bringing his character to life that it just, I don't know, it took me um, by surprise and I was kind of feeling Daniel's pain and feeling his anguish in that moment and, and seeing his mother on the uh, okay well yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying not trying to give too much away but yeah, yeah after... not trying to give too much away but yeah yeah it was um it was very it was very powerful and it was it was um it's it's kind of hard to let go day to day when you're in the middle of that that filming process it took yeah. me a while after the it took this it was a quick shoot I think it was around a month and it after that month, I was like, all right, I need to tap out for a little bit and just, you know, it was, empty. It was a few times me watching it where I was just like, am I going to be able to get through this scene? Like, like, can I do it? Can I do it? Okay. I no, because he's so, so hard. I mean, he was so, like, I mean, sobbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was rough. It was rough to film and it was, I'm like, I can't even, I've seen a, a, a cut of it. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to relive that yeah. and watch it again, but yeah, it'll was, be cool. That was rough, but it, I think it added so much, um, even more depth to the the pain that Daniel and Eli were yeah. living through. Because, you yeah. know, you saw the flashbacks throughout the film of certain things that happened and you kind of start to yeah. understand like the level the pieces of together. Um, piece it together what they experienced. But seeing that scene and seeing, you know, the things that he said to you and how it was shot and the image, like all of it together was just like, wow. Like I felt it. It was a very visceral <laughs> reaction that I had mm -hmm. watching it as a viewer. So yeah, that was one of the scenes that I thought about. I'm like, how did he get through this? And like, then go on to still be able to be present in your day-to-day -day life. Cause you know, yeah. um, but uh, one of the other things that I loved about the film was your interaction with, with Eli, your brother. So, mm -hmm. so how did you and, and Lonnie really um, build that that kinship? Because uh, it felt very real. It felt like you were watching two brothers, you know, yeah. two brother things that were just in a terrible situation, but still very much being brothers for each other. So what was yeah, um, it was it was beautiful. I love Lonnie. Lonnie's such a, a talented actor. Um, and, you know, I was using him as a, a, a sounding board for a lot of a lot of our scenes, I was feeding off of his energy. We were feeding off of each other. And um, I think that's what it takes to, you know, craft a, a slice of life or a beautiful scene is to, you know, have another actor that you really feel like you can trust and, and dive into the material with and really just immerse yourself. Me and Lonnie hung out a few times before we, uh, we started filming and 
I don't know. He's just a really intelligent kid, you know, uh, kind of kid that you, you, you like to be around. Um, he's super funny, just off the walls with, with energy and just a creative genius. So, um, I think just being able to, to feed off of his, um, creative energy was what allowed those, those scenes to flourish and that relationship to bloom. So, um, yeah, just proud of all the work that that he did, and he had a real, real big challenge with with Eli being, um, you know, uh, mute in for for most of the film and struggling with his words and um, getting into that headspace. It was, you know, it was honestly difficult to watch because you'd have one mo moment I'm talking to Lonnie, and the next moment he's in he's in Eli, and it's it's yeah, it's heart wrenching, especially when you're coming from that that place of you know wanting to protect and and make sure that he's okay. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was definitely, um, I feel like that part came easy. The, uh, the, um, the emotional connection and the, the, the kinship. Yeah. And I, I did also appreciate seeing glimmers of hope throughout in the midst of all of the hardship, um, with your neighbor, uh, with Cedric, the entertainer as your neighbor, um, mm -hmm. those little moments where it was like, you you see these two young men and they're really struggling and you see every now and again, you know, there's glimmers of hope of people that are saying, Hey, like you're mm -hmm. not alone in this world and, you know, kind of keep your head up. It was that scene. And also the parking lot scene, still trying not to give too much away, but mm -hmm. another powerful scene. So what was it like working with Cedric? Wonderful. Cedric's fantastic. I know he has a campaign with, uh, my OG TV father, uh, Anthony Anderson, I think they're doing a barbecue, <laughs> excuse me, company together. Nice. Very excited for that. I, I love Cedric. He's a uh, obviously wonderful, legendary actor, hilarious. But when it comes to when it's time to get serious, he can get serious real quick. And and like you said, I, I do love those moments because I, I want to harp on the fact that how I learned to fly uh, while very dark and it's, it's very gritty and there's a lot of um hardships that these characters have to face it truly is a story of hope um and i think we illustrate that very well their situation while it may seem hopeless there are good people out there in the world and there are people who are reaching out to them and trying to um you know help to uplift and, and create a community um and i i think that's what's so beautiful and you know eventually Dang, it is hard to not spoil. That is crazy. Um, yeah, hard it's, to it's, not <laughs> yeah, especially when you reference it. But yeah, it's I, I love that there's so much um, hope. It's very hope driven, uh, which I think is one of the messages that Simon wanted to to put at the forefront. You know, when everything seems bleak, um, there still is hope uh, in the world. So that's the main message that you're hoping that audiences can kind of take away from seeing the story arc and seeing where they start to where they are at the end of the movie. Is that what you want to get to get across to audiences at the root of it? Yeah, it's like you see these kids in the most crushing predicament that I think pretty much anybody could ever be in. Um, and they, um, through all the odds, um, you know, they reached their conclusion. So. Wow. And the film comes out on December 1st. How excited are you to have? I mean, I know it's been a lot with um, writer strike and mm -hmm. supportive of, of what, you know, people are asking for in the industry, which I absolutely 1000% support. But now that, you know, there's been an agreement and we kind of get to go back and support um, some of these amazing pieces of art how do you feel knowing that it's coming out in like a week <laughs> it's very very exciting I mean it's been a, a long time coming it was a, a big process to to get it made and to get it filmed to, so to now see it um, coming out and getting to see audience reaction and, and getting to see how um, you know people are just perceiving the movie is very very exciting um yeah so i'm 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 pumped i'm pumped for december 1st and uh i think i'm going to be going to one of the new york screenings and, and doing like a whole um little q a moment so i'm very excited to get to see what people think and and you know how how they enjoy the film and hopefully how it you know 
inspires them or I know it's going to be a lot of it's going to hurt yeah. a lot but it also <laughs> I feel like it does build you up it's not just all pain um, so uh that's what I th- what I really I think connected to through the script because you know nowadays there's a lot of um you know the world is very bleak and it's easy with our art to you know keep it very bleak but what I love about how I learned to fly is it's kind of like a, an homage and a throwback to you know um the heroes tr- triumphing hopefully in the end so and uh Marcus where can people follow you just to keep up with you and support you on your journey moving forward um you guys can check me out on uh Instagram at Marcus Scribner um Twitter I'm also at Marcus Scribner and I believe on TikTok which I've been more active on recently having fun just interacting with people marcus underscore scribner awesome well marcus thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today i really appreciate it and um good luck with the film i'm excited for you and that people get to to see it soon thank you appreciate it thank you so much for joining me for another episode of sun spotlight how I Learned to Fly opens in theaters nationwide on December the 1st. Check your local listings for showtimes. To keep up with Marcus and all that he's up to, you can follow him on Instagram and Twitter at Marcus Scribner and on TikTok at Marcus underscore Scribner. And to keep up with me and all that I'm up to, you can follow me on Instagram at The Real Charisma, on Twitter and TikTok at Real Charisma, and then head on over to my YouTube channel, Charisma Music, where you can check out some of my latest performances. And while you're online, be sure to like and follow the Philadelphia Sunday Sun on all social media platforms. I'll be back next Thursday at noon with a brand new episode, and I hope to see you there. Until then, have a nice